me and you. Is this close enough? <laughs> <laughs> hey, filthy animals. Welcome back to the Benny and Jacob show. Uh, we are in the Orlando area once more with Jacob and we're doing how to recover your factory F body seats in 732 easy steps. Plus or minus one or two. Pretty much. Walk us through it. So first thing you want to do is you're going to need to go through and you're going to have to pull the seats, skin them, and with a little bit of magic, you end up with something like this. We'll cut to the rest of it. You guys will see how we install these. And... Some of y'all may have noticed, but obviously with my car, it was a fairly base model V6. And as such, it doesn't get any of the fancy things like leather seats or mechanical seats for that, or not, electric seats. It has mechanical seats. So we have this wonderful original cloth interior here. So we're going to be going through and skinning and reskinning the seats today. I got some imitation leather, which some people just call pleather, for these seats. We're gonna go through and we're gonna be installing that today because we're doing everything else with the car. Might as well update the seats, make them look a little better, a little bit holy, need a little bit of love, and might as well get some leather in there rather than just redoing the old original cloth. So I had to get mine custom made and i hit up camaro king la his website is camarokingla.com i will toss his phone number up on the screen for you guys his name is robert but he made me some seat covers because if you don't have a seat with lumbar support the back here is covered in the material on the mechanical seats trans am or anything that has the lumbar support it has a plastic cover here and when you get a new skin made, it will have kind of like the bottoms. I'll show you the other pieces that kind of have what I'm talking about. Like the bottom of the seats have hooks. And with the ones that have the plastic cover on the back, rather than all this middle section, this will all be missing. And there's a tab here, here, and here that you can hook in and it all gets covered. Obviously I'm missing that piece. So I had to get some custom made that cover the whole back because we don't need some yellow foam poking out through here. That's kind of ugly. <clears throat> but he custom made them for me. I got them up. They showed up very quickly. I'm really happy with the quality. We're gonna go through and get them installed. If you guys are looking to get some, he has them in stock. He's not taking any custom orders right now, but he does have, I think he said 500 sets that he's just got in stock, ready to ship, ready to go. You can text him, you can call him. His email is on his website. If you wanna use the contact us page, he doesn't respond to that quite as frequently. I'm gonna put his phone number on screen. Shoot him a text, shoot him a call, be like, hey, this is what I've got if you're looking to get a set of these. He's got a whole bunch in stock, and I got these within a couple days of him shipping. He sent me USPS tracking, and I had them a couple days later. And that's coming from California to Florida. Took care of business, awesome to deal with. I've got new door cards in leather as well, so it's all gonna match. He did the rear seats, front seats, and he even gave me some instructions on how to go through and make these look right. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do this and try and make them look good, look plush, and make them look like they should. So game plan is to do this in five easy steps. Step one is gonna be removing the seats. I'll show you how to pull the front seats. The back seat's a little bit different, but really not bad. And then from there, we're gonna start on probably the passenger seat. We'll disassemble it. If there's any foam repair, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. I'm gonna show you how to de-skin it, how to re-skin it, and then it's just reinstall it. It's really all there is to it. If you have leather seats already, the factory leather does shrink over time. So the foam that makes up your seat will not be the same size as it was originally. With that being the case, it is recommended to get some foam. I can show you what I have in the box to kind of go through and fix my bolstering here so that it looks as it should. But you can get like some sew foam and just kind of add it in a couple places to give it some more bulk. It'll fix how they look. It'll make them a little bit more comfortable because the original seat foam is a little bit hard. Sew foam is usually a little softer. It'll help bulk up the seat, make the bolstering look proper. 
and it's also just going to give this it's going to give it more of a hugging shape when you sit down into it i'll show you how we go through and do that i'll show you what glue i'm using and as i go if i notice anything like a little tip little pointer here or there or whatever i'll show you how we do that i'm gonna show you how to break down the seats and i guess that's enough talking let's get right into it we're at the point where we're going to start tearing the seats out i went ahead and put a light bar in here just so it's a little bit easier to see what i'm doing but with these seats you're going to need a phillips screwdriver to go through and remove the seat belt guide and then at the bottom there are 13 millimeter bolts on each corner for the fronts you remove those remove this piece on the headrest or ring on the condition of your car you can literally just remove the whole headrest i'm going to just take this off so i can pull the whole seat out when it comes to the backs these ones are a little different of course i put the light bar in the way there is a 15 millimeter bolt here at the bottom front i'll show you in a little bit and then a 13 millimeter nut down on the corner and when you come around to the back for the seat belt guide it's held in with two torx bolts here i'll get some lighting real quick hold on there's two torx bolts there and you just go through pull those and then the whole upper seat back comes out at which point you can work on de-skinning it. I'll show you everything about that because there were a couple tips and tricks that Robert gave me, wanted me to include because he's been doing this for the last about 20 years, he said. They've been skinning seats. They've done customer installs. He's got sets just in hand where if you live in, or in California and you want to just get some seats just dropped in, he might have some in stock where you can literally come in he takes your old seats out, drops the new ones in, and you're done. He's got a handful of guys that work with him. He does really good work. I'll get one of these seats pulled, and when we take it in, I will show you the skin and what it looks like, the quality of it, the stitching options, things like that, and we'll go from there. Passenger seat, it's really not hard to remove. There are six pieces of hardware. You have two Phillips screws here in the headrest that hold the seatbelt guide in. Nice easy removal here. If you have a drill, you can use a drill to remove these. I just feel like using hand tools because I don't have any batteries charged other than the one that's in the light bar. Irresponsible decision, I know. Always keep your power tool batteries charged. Makes life a lot easier. So, you undo these two screws. Just like that, seatbelt guide is now loose from the seat. You can push the bottom. You can take the bottom here, push it out the way, and you've got some decent access to everything. We're gonna take the seat. If you have mechanical seats, they go back a little further, but you just adjust it back. You can get to the hardware here, one over there. They're 13 millimeter nuts. Once you remove those, slide the seat all the way forward, and you can get to the rear ones. A standard socket's working fine. Once you break them loose, they usually spin loose the rest of the way by hand. The lump in the floor does kind of get in the way of the one in the corner up here. Gotta love that space for the catalytic converter. We've already got the front two out. Slide it all the way forward. We can get to the back two. Just like that, all of them are undone. It's really not hard. The worst part in all honesty is probably gonna be getting it out the car because it's a little awkward, especially if your car's lowered. It's not exactly in an easy position, but just like that, just kind of tilt it and bring it out. You guys saw me remember the passenger seat. So we're gonna go ahead and start on tear down, eh? Go ahead and pull this up a bit. There are clips that hold these in. If you force this out, it can break. You saw my driver's headrest, it just pulls right out. So like this one, I'm pulling pretty good on there. It's not coming out. Don't force it. There are clips in here that hold the headrest in. They're inside. When you start de-skinning this, you can use a screwdriver to release them, pull it out the rest of the way out. If you force it, it'll break it. That's up to you. 
replacing these is hard because you got to find seats that somebody's willing to tear apart and a lot of times if somebody's selling a seat it's in good shape they don't want to do that so what we're going to start on is separating the back of the seat from the bottom step one with that i would say would be go ahead and pop this guy loose we're going to go over how you remove this it's literally just grab a claw hammer slide it under there pull up on it don't lose this i'm gonna just set it there for now so it's kind of out of the way remove this plastic cover again it is a phillips screw so it's literally just screwdriver drill whatever you want to use spin it out nice and easy and again don't lose your hardware because then you're going to be hunting everywhere for it try and keep an eye on where it goes where you set it that kind of thing it'll make your life a lot easier But the other thing that we're going to go over is the bottom of the seat. So it's on there like that. Pull it towards the bottom of the seat. It wiggles, pops free. There's a little hook there. That's why you got to pull it so that it comes off of here. On this side where the adjustment bracket is, you have two bolts. They're 13 mil. The longer one goes there, shorter one here, just like that. And then on the other side, you have a Torx bolt, just one of them, goes through this little bracket here. This is a T50 in size. You also have this washer. This goes between the upper and the lower portion of the seat. Right here, goes on this side. The other thing is we are gonna go ahead and remove the seat rails. 13 and 13. When you bring this forward, there are two here at the back. It's underneath there, it's kinda hard to see. I went ahead and I got this one. Honestly, it's not as bad as I remember. All you gotta do is just kinda get your hand under there and you can lip it up a little bit. It's really not bad. Doing this left hand is a little awkward, but just like that, it comes loose. Just do the other side. I'm gonna swap hands, see if it's any easier. unlip it work it up on these if you look at the side profile here you can see that there's like curves down but then back up it's kind of hooked and that's so it can grab on these that's why it's not quite as easy as it could be you do get better access to things like the bottoms of these to go through kind of pop it but Get it all loose. We'll go ahead and flip it. <clears throat> you just gotta kind of work the cover off. Start at the corner, just kind of work it up a little bit. Be gentle. It is old. And then be mindful because there's Velcro in here. Nice and easy. And as you can see, the foam will want to come up with it gently work the foam because as you can see it is ripping there as you can see we've undone the velcro it is just a nice square shape the other thing is as you can see on the side here the foam is ripped what we're going to do is we're going to put some wellwood contact cement down in there and then just stick it back together and hold it because as it goes and wears you can see when you put weight on the center how it pulls in when it sinks through those lines in the bottom here when it cuts through those you just end up falling basically through the seat. You no longer sit on the foam, you're sitting on the edges here. And these edges line up right here on the bottom. And this is what you end up putting your weight on. It's not comfortable, not a good time, don't recommend it. We're gonna take the cover the rest of the way off. Just like that, we have a skin seat bottom. You can see even the rip up here a little bit. So we're gonna go through, we'll kind of glue that, put some glue down. Anywhere that there's a big split. So like these little tears aren't too bad. If you want to put some glue in there, you can. It's probably not a bad idea. Just try and give it some more hold. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the new seat cover on this and install it. And you can see how it looks right in here with these. 
just so you can get an idea of why it's wrong. Because what you wanna do is you wanna add some foam on top of this to help fluff it. The Velcro, as you saw me remove it, is gonna hold it down in the center pretty good. But the edges here, the foam's gonna shrink over time, especially if you have an OEM leather seat cover. So you go through and you add some bolstering just all the way along the sides and then down over the edge a little bit. It doesn't have to be a ton, just gives us some more of the depth to it, makes it a little thicker. And it's just gonna help the seats look more plush, they'll be more comfortable, especially as you're sitting in here. I don't think I know anybody who's hip to hip is this narrow, but as your legs are resting against this, you're gonna have a little bit more extra plush on there. It's just gonna be a better ride overall. You can add a little bit here if you want to even. There's a lot of options. When I tear the driver's seat apart, you're gonna see the foam that we already added to it, and you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. After seeing this one get worked on, you'll see what we did on my driver one, and the differences that I can tell you it made as far as ride quality and comfort. These are the ones I got from Robert. He's the man over at Camaro King LA. I am extremely excited about these. And this is the original. If you look at this, this does have a little bit more shape to it, but being that this is a little bit of a heavier material, it's not gonna hold its shape as well. It's also brand new. This has been in the car for 24 years now. It's got more time to kind of conform to shape and just kind of hold it. If you look inside, there is some fluff, some padding to the back of the originals. And when you look inside the new ones, I don't want to set this on the concrete. When you look inside the new ones, it's the same thing. He backs it all with some really nice material. He gives you straps here for the Velcro to hold on to. And honestly, like this is really soft on the inside. It almost feels memory foam like. You get OEM style hooks. So you literally just slip it on, Velcro it down, and then clip it on. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Before we add any foam, we're gonna stick it on here. And I'll let you guys see how it looks because if you want these to look right, you do need to add foam. Some of you might wanna see what it looks like without it. So you can get an idea and it's just, we're here, might as well see what it looks like just straight off the box, no extra work, how it's gonna turn out. I'm gonna put in the extra work, taking the time to do all the body work and make it look nice. We're gonna make the seats look well. Got a good dash, good dash pad, everything like that. I'm not gonna half-ass these. We're gonna make sure these look good. We're gonna put some time and effort into them, but for now, just so you guys get an idea of how it looks, just slapping it together real quick and dirty-like, we're gonna throw them on there. Step one, I'm just gonna place this upside down. It's a little awkward trying to do this without an extra set of hands to hold the camera or anything. But have this upside down. We're just gonna kinda flip this over. Try and gently, gently pull this over and get it in there. I might have to set the camera down. But you guys get the idea. It's supposed to go down and in. We'll pull the back corners down. We can put it on here. All I've really got to say just sticking the foam in, just putting the foam in, pushing the Velcro down so that it's held down all around is wow. Because this is with the side still loose, nothing is pulled tight, nothing's held as it should. That looks really, really good. We're not even at the point of things being properly done yet. And we've already got a seat that looks that good with a 30 second install to put it on the foam. Pretty impressed already. Based off the pictures that he sent me, it looks like you wanna place the foam roughly as such. Probably trim it about here, maybe a little higher, about here, straight across, and then you wanna kinda of wrap it down over the edge as you go. So I'm going to go ahead and apply glue here, apply some glue to the back of this piece, and look at getting it stuck on there. Um, again, with a glue, apply it, let it tack. Once it's tacked and it's tacked, then you wanna stick it. When it sticks, you might have to hold it for a little bit just so that it grabs. But I'm gonna go ahead and start on that. Then we'll do the bottom seat with those pieces. Once those are on there and tacked, we'll go ahead and move from there. Um, based off the pictures of the bottom seats, it looks like, man, these are a little hard to tell. Looks like based off the bottom seat it goes about like so. 
again, wrap it over the edges and glue it like that. This is gonna give you just a little bit more cushion where you're sitting and everything. Be a nice little addition to how everything goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply glue to all of this, start letting it tack because with the temperature out, it's taking a minute. And then while we're waiting on that, I'm gonna show you how you guys, show you guys how to put the cover on this. So we'll be back once these are applied and tacking. So we're back on the bottom seat. We're going to go through and fix these cracks on the side, cracks, tears, whatever you wanna call them. Um, you want to get Weldwood contact adhesive Home Depot, Lowe's, both of them have it. They've got spray cans, they've got the liquid. I went ahead and bought the liquid because with a spray can, you're gonna get overspray, it's gonna get everywhere. I'd rather just not deal with that. Um, this stuff, if you have a cheap spray gun, you can put it in there to use it for that as well. And then for application, I'm just using foam brushes. They're cheap, they're little. Doesn't matter if it gets full of glue and it's junk afterwards, who cares? And with the bristle brushes, you risk having bristles come out and getting stuck in the seat, and that's just annoying. I'd rather not deal with that. So this stuff, what you want to do is you want to apply it to both sides and then you need to let it tack. So I'm just going to dip this, kind of smush it in the crack, fill the crack with it, and then hold it open for a little bit. Depending on temperature, it's going to affect how quickly it tacks. Um, it's like 50-ish degrees out right now, so it's going to tack up slower, which means it's going to take longer to do this. If you do this in your house and the material, like the glue is warmer, it's gonna help. So if you plan to do this one day, leave the glue in your house, let it get warm overnight. It'll help it tack up faster. I left this in the car, so it's sitting at about 50 degrees. Not great. Um, yeah, you literally just, I'm gonna dip this in here. This stuff is relatively sticky, so if you don't wanna drip it everywhere, just kinda of twirl and spin the brush, and then dab it down in the crack, try and fill it, get a good amount of spread. It will soak into the foam, so you are going to have to apply a decent little bit in there. We're gonna apply it liberally. And just fill it all through the crack. It doesn't have to be all through there, but the more you get in there, the more it can glue and hold. And give it some extra strength. Um, and then you just wait. You wanna sit, you wanna hold it open, let it get some air over it, tack up. Once it tacks, you literally just push it closed and it'll hold. It's really easy. All right, so next step's gonna be the bottom. Um, Robert recommended that I turn it inside out to try and get it stuck down to the Velcro. So we're gonna work with that, try and get it on the Velcro perfectly first. Once it's on the Velcro, kinda fitting it around the foam to get everything into place. Um, I don't know if I have a really good spot for you guys to sit and be able to see all this. Let's see what I can do. That's okay. Yes, I am using a camera or a jack stand as a camera stand, but it's working. From right there, it looks like you guys can see pretty well. So, I had my phone somewhere, but as I said, we're gonna stick it inside out. Um, again, aligning the square on the bottom with the rest of the Velcro on the seat and just pressing it down into place. And honestly, doing this inside out already infinitely better than it was otherwise. And the next step, I guess, is going to be trying to kind of work it over the seat and get it pulled right side out. Which might be a little bit easier said than done. Especially with the additional bolstering on here. I'll keep this in the frame for you guys. Again, 
there is additional bolstering and everything on there, so it kind of makes sense for it to not want to just slide over nice and easy as if it were factory. I mean, it's to be expected for a tight fit. You're gonna have things like the foam get squished. It's gonna give the leather a nice, tight, full look to it. Which, again, is what you're gonna want, because if it doesn't look nice and tight and full, it's gonna have wrinkles, it's gonna be kinda ugly. But what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna try and go ahead and get this bottom clip on here. You guys can't really see. I'll try and get this bottom on the front clipped in. And then I'll work on kind of manipulating the foam the rest of the way around the seat so that it grabs right. Go ahead. All right. So that's lipped on there. Next step's gonna be kind of working everything around the seat as we go. Um, Again, I'm not a professional at this. I've seen it done. That's about it. And I'm literally just guessing as I go as to how some of this is. Being that I'm not a professional, I've not done this a lot, aka this is literally my first time doing this personally. And honestly, it just feels like kind of pull the leather, stretch the leather, work your hands over it. Rinse and repeat, do it a couple times. It's kind of like putting vinyl wrap on. Just squish it, pull it, stretch it. If you got wrinkles, kind of pull perpendicular to them. It helps hide them, helps get rid of them. kind of work it as you go. Run your hands over it a few times. I really don't think this is all that hard in all honesty. I feel like these are pretty easy to go through and install. It just takes time, a little bit of muscle, a little bit of effort, a lot of bit of effort. Don't do this if you're not willing to put those things in, but If you're okay putting work and effort into your car, you should have no issue installing these, I don't think. seat bottom on you guys saw me do that firsthand I don't think it was too bad at all a couple small wrinkles and the other thing is as they see heat vinyl's gonna shrink a little bit so those wrinkles are kind of pull out the leaving out if you want to you can try using a heat gun on it I wouldn't recommend it just because I would rather let it kind of do it on its own rather than force it to behave and take it shape. I like to let it just do so with time. But again, I have literally never installed a seat cover on my own. I would say that looks good. As you sit on it, it'll push the inside down, but we've got a little bit extra bolstering here. The front's got a nice amount of padding. It's going to be nice and comfortable. 
And I guess the next step is to put some holes in the side so I can put the bracketry back on and put the top half on it. So as you can see, I put a piece of foam on the bottom here between the wires and everything. I also put the rails back on. The next step is going to be putting holes over here for the bolts. What I recommend doing is slide your finger in underneath the cover until you can feel where the hole is for the nut cert. Put your finger on top of that and then just push down. And then I'm going to grab a razor blade and make a small X incision and push one of the bolts through and try and start threading it. I recommend doing this carefully because obviously you don't want to put a whole bunch of holes in your seat. But just like that, that bolt has started threading. The next thing is going to be finding the other one. Again, I recommend trying to stick your finger up under there, feel for it, locate it because they're not going to be super easy to find. The other thing is if you really want to try, you can try and take a rough measurement. It looks like it should be in here as far as distance goes. And I feel it right there. So if you kind of eyeball things, you can get an idea. I looked at the bracket here, the whole distance, and it feels like right there. So small X incision. Just a little one like that. I'm gonna pull that back so you guys can see. A little one like that, and then we're gonna take the bolt, push it through and down, keep pushing. Eventually it'll bite some threads and pull through. Um, with the material on the back of this, it may be a little bit difficult to get it started, but eventually it'll get started like that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the other side and do the same thing. We're going to kind of feel around. We can't feel it very easily. That might be it there. This one feels like it's higher up. So what we're gonna do is, I think it's that one there. I'm gonna put a finger in, kind of feel around. And it might actually be here. It's kind of hard to tell. Might have to pull the driver's seat for comparison, but somewhere in here is where that larger bolt threads through. I think it's here because I feel like that makes the most sense based off how this looks. The other thing is you can take these bolts out on the side here and you can put the seat back on, get these threaded, and then make the hole on the other side based off that. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. The seat back literally just drops straight on these, so keep that in mind. So as far as getting the seat back, this is how it looks from factory for the fully closed ones. If you have a plastic seat back, you're gonna have to remove that. I don't know the exact steps, but for this one, this little seam here, you can just kind of pull it on the back side and it comes apart like that. Nothing too crazy. Flip it up. It is, of course, Velcro down. I'm gonna go through, peel up all the Velcro. And then you can work on peeling the skin, which I think I'm gonna set you guys down again for. So, now we're working on peeling this guy. I don't know if it's easier to invert this or not, or just try and get it up over the phone. So we're gonna find out. We're gonna learn together a little bit. I'm gonna go for inverting, because I feel like that makes the most sense. When you're doing this, be mindful of the lever on the back. The little one here. Don't just pull your material over it. You gotta pull it out rather than drag it across it and rip tearing open the cover more. Because, I mean, if your covers are in decent shape, ain't no reason to destroy them. But, make sure you're not sticking to any Velcro. Kinda keep peeling as you go. Up and over. Just like that. Now, sweet, nice and easy. 
We're gonna reach in here and pull the headrest up. So I can show you guys how these retaining clips work. I don't even know if we really need a screwdriver for them or not. But, These are your headrest poles. And then these are the plastic retaining bits. When you push a headrest up, those get caught. So you can use a screwdriver, or if your hands are strong enough, you can try and pop those up by hand and push it through. You're gonna need both hands to do that, but literally this piece here goes that way so that it's not in the groove anymore, and then you can pop these out. Shouldn't be too bad. If you just yank on them, you risk breaking them which isn't the worst case because then you can still remove the headrest. It'll actually be a little easier to remove the headrest, but if you don't want to break it, you just need to be careful. Try and peel the plastic up a little bit and push it through. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This is the headrest guide. As you can see, I wasn't careful enough with mine. I did break it. Um, the retaining clips are on the front and on the back. I thought they were just on the front. So it's pulling up on the front, trying to pull it through. I didn't do it quite enough I guess and I ended up breaking it um, when you're working on these be mindful because I had it like this I was pushing down on the back not the back I was push, pulling up on the front and when I was pulling it I guess the way that I had it kind of wedged between the screwdriver and everything just ended up snapping it off ended up with these wonderful little broken pieces um, it's not gonna affect how the headrest fits at all. It just will make it so that instead of the headrest locking when you go to pull it out, it just slides right out. Things that you kind of live and learn with. The driver's one is already broken, so I guess it's not the end of the world, but they have a retaining section on the front and on the rear. Something to keep in mind. You can kind of see them there, yeah. So be mindful of that. Try to avoid breaking it, unless you don't really care at which point it's your car. But when you go to remove these, just try and gently pry both of them. It's a little awkward, there's not a ton of space, but if you can gently pry both of them, that's gonna be your best bet. Um, looking at the seat foam, this is the passenger seat, so overall it's going to have less wear all the way around, which is to be expected. The original stuff has what feels like dryer sheets everywhere and it's stringy and messy. But again, back at it with the Velcro. Gotta love GM. So more Velcro, side bolstering, both sides. There's not as many rips on this. There is this one, which I'll probably glue shut. If you notice any rips or anything, I'm going to show you. I'm using Weldwood contact cement. So use that, glue it shut. Hold this open, put a little bit on each side, let it tack up, and then just pinch it shut, hold it. It'll fix the hole and just give it some more strength back. The rest of this honestly isn't in too bad a shape. I don't notice any real damage other than you can see where the headrest pins come through and they were touching the back. It's kind of to be expected, especially if you have somebody who's taller, a little bit heavier. As they sit in here and lean back, the foam's gonna push through to the backside a little bit. You're gonna have issues like that. But as you're just doing this, be mindful, be careful. Try not to destroy anything, obviously. We're gonna go ahead, put the new one here on. We are going, looks like we are gonna have to punch the holes in it for the headrest, unless we wanna delete the headrest, which as much as I'd love to, this isn't a Camaro, so. We're going to have to go through, put holes in here for the headrest. We'll have to put a little one here for this piece. I recommend using a razor blade, something nice and sharp, so you're not tearing up and destroying the material. And just take your time. If you want these to look right, don't hurry through them. I'm going to slide this over so you guys can get a comparison of what it looks like without the additional foam along the bolster here on the sides. And you can kind of get an idea of how it fits. But again, this is just to show you why you want to add that extra foam, why you want to take your time and be careful installing these. You don't want to have issues where it fits bad and you're not happy with it if you're installing these yourself. If you take them to an upholstery shop, they should know to do all of this. If they don't do it all, then 
they just don't have enough experience working with older seat foam because it's kind of known that the leather or the foam is going to shrink. It's going to need work. You're going to need to add a little bit here and there just to make sure things fit and look as they should. It's 24 years old. It's not going to be like it was when it was new. So as you can see, I got the seat cover slid in or the seat slid into the cover. Um, the main thing I'm noticing and it could be the temperature. I'm not sure. I've got to kind of touch base with Robert about it is that these covers fit tight, which is good because it means you're going to have less wrinkles. You're going to have less issues like that. So when I say that, the reason I mention that is there's a Velcro line right along this seam. Understandable. But what that means is I have to connect that white line to the black line up at the end in there. So I have to pull the material towards me stretch it almost just that i get that nice tight fit understandable i want a tight fit i want it to look right but that's the main thing i'm noticing that i'm kind of having to struggle with on these a bit is getting it to fit to the velcro locations i noticed it on the bottom seat a little bit that pulling it back and getting it onto those was a good bit of work that might be something that kind of changes as i go through now the bolstering it might give it a little bit more slide if the foam's not as grippy might make it a little easier to kind of stretch it, pull it back, and get it stuck down. Once it sticks to the Velcro, the Velcro is grabbing phenomenally well to whatever material he's putting in here. These strips here are doing an excellent job holding onto the Velcro. The main thing is just stretching it down to the Velcro, I'm noticing is being a little difficult. Um, I've heard that it's easier to work these seats when they're warmer. It gives them a little more stretch. I don't want to heat gun the seat or anything because obviously I don't know how it'll react but I'm going to keep trying to stretch this because it does have a good amount of stretch you can pull it down a good bit I'm probably I think the best thing to do would be start in the middle here get that pulled down on the velcro do the edges and then do these vertical strips after that because you do the vertical strips first you're going to get a wrinkle here somewhere if they're not down far enough so we're going to start in the middle work it across side to side and then pull these edges down um, I'm setting the whole thing in my lap so I have like I can pull it against me I can use my body to kind of hold the inside of the foam as I'm pulling it towards me rather than trying to fight it on the floor or anything because even though this is imitation leather and it's stronger than normal leather it still can be torn up and I'm not looking to do that I just bought these they're brand new they're supposed to look better than the original we don't want to destroy them so just be mindful of that I am putting a good amount of pull on these so I will kind of wait to see what he says. The other thing is, on the back here, try and be gentle with where this little knob goes. I'm trying not to put too much pressure because you can see it does kind of stretch and wear the material. I'm guessing that's about where it's going to go at the end of it all just because the way that the cover is resting on the foam. But don't cut that hole till after you have the front fitted how you want it. You've got your extra bolstering, that kind of thing. Don't make any adjustments to this, cuts, tears, whatever until it's 100% on where it goes. At which point I'll put the holes in the top. You can feel, like there's a low spot there, there's a low spot here. You can feel those, kind of get the center of them, put a hole in it and then push the plastic in. Don't do that now. You might be in the wrong spot. You might end up ruining the cover. Do that after you got everything fitted how you want it. So I'm gonna get back to you trying to stretch this and pull it on there. I'll let you guys know how it goes. We're gonna see if these seat covers are tacky enough, not the seat covers, the foam, is tacky enough to stick onto the seats. So, I'm put you guys there. This piece, you kind of see the shape of it, is for this side of the seat. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this and apply it between the two, maybe hit it with a little bit of heat to help it kind of set up a little faster and see if that helps. So 
we'll do that. Grab a heat gun. And like I said, just a little bit of heat. You don't need a ton. And then just kind of press and hold it. Let it set up a little bit. Feels like it's grabbing on there pretty good. And then what we're gonna do is we'll just kind of keep going through and doing that. We're gonna apply a little bit of heat. And while this is, before this starts to soak in is when you want to try and hold it down. So while it's still kind of on the surface and shiny, we're gonna go ahead and press and hold. It's okay if you have to go through and trim this afterwards. You can always go through and trim material away. It's a lot easier to remove material than it is to add it. So keep that in mind when you're doing stuff like this that it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. You can always, always, always take material away, but adding material gets a lot more difficult. That goes for everything, metal, plastics, anything like that. It's always easier to remove the material than it is to put it back on. And the other thing is these don't have to be 100% perfect. They just gotta be good. Because when you put the seat cover on, it's gonna help hold this stuff in place, especially as the glue dries. It'll help keep it where it needs to be. I just wanna try and get this to tack up and hold enough that it doesn't peel off while I put the seat cover on. I don't want it peeling up and then rolling off or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead, keep applying this. Um, if you have painter's tape, painter's tape would probably be really nice here because you can just kind of tape over it and get it to hold down while you work the other side. Or if it's warm enough out and you don't have to keep fighting it, that would be the other best option as far as making sure everything kind of works as it should. The other thing is you can just take a nice set of scissors and you can cut this stuff if you need to. All right, so now that the additional foam is in place for the most part, you guys can kind of see it there. We're going to go ahead and put the cover back on. So I had to wait. Now that the foam's sticking down about as best as it's wanting to, like I have to keep going over the bottom over here and like resetting it down while it tacks and holds a little bit better and tacks and holds a little bit better. I just keep kind of re-sticking it. Um, I'm going to put the back on just to try and hold the foam in place so I don't have to keep going over it and then I can keep working because as of right now, I've been working on this for like two hours between recording, asking questions and moseying through it. So it's about time to get chewing on it and move on. So I'm just going to show you how to do the passenger seat, the front driver's seat. I probably won't have recorded as much just because I'm showing you guys how to do this one. Um, again, apply the glue, just kind of go over it, keep re-sticking it. As it tacks more and more, it'll hold more and more. And then once it's holding in place pretty damn good, what you'll do is you'll just go ahead and put the seat covers back on. So I'm going to stand this up, kind of hold it up. We will open the seat cover, just slide it over. Shouldn't be too terribly hard. And then once it started sliding over, we can go ahead and kind of manipulate the bolstering, keep pulling down as we go. Go side to side, don't just pull one side. You'll risk stretching it, tearing it up, making it look ugly. We don't wanna do that. We want these to look good. That's the whole point of doing this, right? So, just back and forth, side to side, work it, pulling it, stretching it. Might accidentally hit yourself a time or two, but that's okay. We've all shed a little bit of blood, sweat, and tears for our cars. And unfortunately, the seats won't prove to be any different. 
as nice as that would be. But I like to show you guys the whole struggle as I go through and do this because I don't want to just cut between things. Have you guys be like, well, what do you do here? What do you do there? I feel like that kind of takes away from the point of recording it to go through and do stuff like that. So now that the seat cover's on, for the most part, go ahead and pull it, stretch it, make sure it's coming over nicely. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to reach inside, feel that upper Velcro strap, and see how far I need to go. Right now it feels like I've got about an inch. So I'm gonna start at the top, kind of push it, pull it. Might have to kind of manipulate it a little bit more, but you really want to try and get that onto the Velcro. And once you do, work it down the line. And then work down the sides. So you got a little bit more grab in there. And just keep doing that until you get it stuck down pretty good. This takes trial, error, patience. Lots of patience. Because as you can see, it didn't stick. So I'm gonna keep messing with that, keep fighting with it. You just gotta keep stretching, keep pulling, keep sticking until eventually it holds. And I'm not gonna lie to you and say it's easy because it's not. It's gonna take a good bit of just working it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You might have to go through and kind of brace on your knee or something and hold both sides as you pull the cover down onto the seat itself some more. Kind of like that. But you just gotta keep working it. Eventually, you'll get it where you want it. And I'll come back when I got it there. All right, so I've been fighting with this. As you can see, I honestly think it looks really, really good. The bottom here is a very, very difficult section. Um, the way that it clips together, it's, it just came unclipped. So it's a clip, like it's a U, and there's a piece that goes in, and they've got two hooks that kind of like, there's a flat edge, they just push in and lock. Getting them together is quite difficult. Um, I found the best option to be to pull the front and hold it as far as you can, and then take the rear, because you have to fold the rear over and get it to stick in. You just heard it click, at which point you can just kind of work your way down the line and keep trying to manipulate it in there. But again, it's not easy. This is probably the hardest part so far has been fighting with this damn clip and getting it into place as it needs to be because it's just that tight of a fit and the seat back's so awkward to try and hold. But as you go, keep pulling, pushing, until eventually you get the whole thing in. Let me give my hand a break right quick because this is difficult. bits of struggling here because I don't want you guys to see me do this and be like oh it looks it just must be easy it's not you're gonna have a lot a lot a lot I'm sitting here struggling thinking is this how this is supposed to go because a lot of it's just by feel there is no hey this is exactly how it works you just have to kind of do it hope that you're right I think I need to cut this I think that's what stopped me here so grab a razor blade Got one. Grab a 
razor. Just gently, gently, gently. Beautiful. Just like that. Make a very gentle incision that will alleviate some of the pressure I'm fighting here, I think. Maybe. We'll find out. I'm gonna keep fighting with this. I'll bring you guys back when I'm done. As far as the headrest goes, we'll go ahead and cover that real quick because it's a bit different. Uh, the other pieces on the vehicle just kind of go over with the headrest. It's not the same as the rest of it all. You end up leaving the cloth cover on the headrest because with the cloth headrest, it's glued on. There is a small split here on the bottom but if you pull on it, you can feel that it's glued. It's not like the upper section of the seat cover where there's a split and it clips together. This is glued on, it's going to stay on there. We're just going to put the leather over top of it. So I'm going to grab it from right here. This is the headrest cover. And on this one, we've got a Velcro bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and look at getting this installed and I'm gonna test fit it and then I'll be back. We're back. So, off camera, I went through and installed this headrest cover. Um, it's a bit difficult. It does fit really tight. On the driver one, I will record it to show you guys, but as you can see, this looks really good. Um, one thing to note is if you have cloth super baseline seats, they're not like the Trans Am ones. They are concave on the front here. Rather than flat, it has an indentation. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but it does have an indentation here. And I'm gonna wait till it's warmer because the glue is not being very cooperative at the moment, unfortunately. But I will apply a light bit of glue in there and then stick it down and hold it so that it matches that shape. I think it'll look a little bit better, look a little bit more OEM-like, especially for how my seats are styled. But we are going to start on the bottoms. We got some pictures of how the foam, like the additional foam should be installed. Robert went ahead and texted me those. So I'm going to lay them on the bottoms, show you guys kind of how they're laid out. We'll put the pictures up on screen too. And then I will work on applying some glue, getting it to tack, and moving on to the upper part while it tacks. And then we can look at applying it and I'll bring you guys back for that. As I stated, um, using those to line up, I got those two bolts in and then I brought it to this side. You kind of eyeball where it goes, punched a hole in it, stuck the bolt in, put the plastic cover on. The next step is going to be the headrest holes. You can kind of see a slight indentation here where there's no foam. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just going to make a hole. I'm going to kind of feel around. I feel that the center of the hole is about there. So it's probably where I'll start the X and then I'm going to take the plastic push pins push them down through, drop the headrest in. Uh, make sure you pick the right side. One side's gonna feel more flat than the other. So like this one is my passenger headrest because I can feel that the seatbelt guide went here. So that one's gonna be my driver. If you don't remember which ones you do, because I took both mine out. Bad decision on my part, but this one's the passenger seat. So there's the headrest for it. Um, like I said, I'm just gonna make a couple little incisions, push those through drop the headrest in, and then this should be good to go back into the car, other than I gotta remove the back seat and start on that next. Next up is probably gonna start on the back seats. I went ahead and removed the driver's seat just for access. As I stated a little bit earlier on, there is one bolt right there, you can see it. I think it's a 13 as well. Got my wrench right here, actually, we'll find out. Yeah, it's also a 13. 
Um, an extension would be your friend here, but for the purpose of the video, just trying to hurry through, get this pulled out the way. Probably should have pulled it beforehand, but you know, hindsight's 2020. Um, yeah. These bolts are, from what I remember, a little bit long. I don't understand why, but these bolts have much more length than they need to, in my opinion. I guess it's just for the ease of getting them started and into place. But we're at the back seat now. You guys are on the floor. This is the bolt they use to hold it in. It's a little bit longer than I feel like is necessary. But literally, after that, you just pick it up, toss it out. So, after that, you've got a 13 right here. It's a little bit awkward to get to, but I believe you can fit a ratchet on there you can just like that and then all you got to do after that is the torque bits on the top and the back seat back is ready to come out you do have to remove both the seat bottoms the driver and passenger to get to that bolt and then those upper bolts you can take the whole top half out we'll start on that next so as you can see we got the back seat scanned already um the mounting brackets at the bottom here stay on but the levers on the sides have to come off. These are a Torx bit. Just, I grabbed an impact, zipped it loose. It got stuck on one side, so I zipped it back in, then spun it all the way out. It did fine. Um, these little pieces here are from the Velcro. The OEM Velcro, you can see where it went. It does peel off with time, so all you wanna do is just glue it back. You've already got kind of like a glued surface there to apply your glue to, so go ahead and apply some, let it tack up. Then you can start putting the cover on. The bottom seats, it looks like you need a hog ring tool for. I haven't gotten to those yet, those will be next. And I'll bring one of the seat bottoms out to look at. And if you do need a hog ring tool, I'll let you guys know. I'll probably have to pick one up and some hog rings. And we'll start on that one. But for now, I'm gonna get some glue on here, glue on there, get these stuck on, go grab the cover from in the house and start putting it on. This one shouldn't take very long at all new rear seat cover um obviously we've got the seat here on the floor in front of us i think the easiest thing would be to just need to get all these little plastic bits off i didn't knock them off for a i think the easiest thing is honestly going to be well a not letting the phone come off like that for those of you who didn't know your back seat has a nice hard plastic back to it um, I really don't know what the easiest method for putting all this together will be. We're just going to kind of guess and experience it together. I'm going to pick you guys up and move you right quick. Just a little bit further back so you guys can see a little better. Alright. So, yeah, you can see pretty well there. We're just gonna kinda put it there. Well, I think I just slide it over here. Now, I would try and slide it down on both sides at the same time. It's probably gonna be your easiest bet because if not, you're gonna fight at an angle. It might just not want to work that way. So I'm gonna start with this. Make sure it feels like it's all proper inside. One set at a time. Um, the other thing, I mentioned the Velcro to you guys. Um, I don't see a spot included on these rears for the Velcro. So we're gonna see if the material itself will just stick down. If not, we might have to put some glue or something in there. Either case, I'm not crazy worried about it. Cause it'll still work in the end. It'll be fine. We'll make it work. But for now, we just gotta keep getting the seat covered down further and further.
While you're doing this, I recommend trying to hold the foam as steady as you can. Uh, I've noticed that the foam is kind of wanting to slide a little bit as I'm pulling this down. So throw an arm in there, kind of pinch it up at the top, hold it to the plastic backing as you slide it down and then slide it down and then slide it down. Just keep a hand up in there. It'll help it stay in place, keep it from being a problem. Just make it a little easier to work with, ideally. Because at the end of the day, the less headaches you have, the happier you'll be. So, right now I'm noticing that it doesn't seem like the foam is in like it should be. Especially here on the side, I can see that it's not really lined up like it's supposed to. So I'm gonna just pull it up in there. Seems like it's doing a lot better already. Pulling and stretching and pulling and stretching. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. I'll bring you guys back when I get this sorted. Got this side done. Um, much like the front seat, these are difficult. I don't like these a whole lot, but I understand their point because they're meant to be tight. When they're tight, it's gonna make it look better. It's gonna pull all the material down. I wish this camera had a little bit of a taller view. Um, it's gonna pull the material tighter. It's gonna make it look better. Understandable. At that point, like, it's worth fighting it once. So what I'm noticing is flip this one up. You can pull it a little bit, but the front side is really what you're going to be able to work with because you've got all this foam on the front. You can really pull it and get it to stretch. You can squish the foam down. You have so much more to work with when you're fighting the front side versus just strictly fighting the rear. So I like to try and get an edge started like this, hold it, and then bring up the rest and just keep working it. Now, you just kind of pull it. You can hear it click, it's down into place. Again, I only did the other side. Um, I've done the front seat. So I've got a little bit of hands on time with this. I'm not a professional by any means, but that seems to be the easiest way. And then if it doesn't feel like it's centered in there, you can just 
push the edges together. It'll kind of center itself. And you end up with the seat cover on there pretty well. Um, the next step, I guess, would be the middle here, which I guess is probably gonna be along the same lines. I'm not 100% sure, because it is curved to fit the trans tunnel. So we're gonna try the same method here. Start an edge, kind of get the whole thing going. Yeah, that actually went pretty well, I think. Feels like it's in about as good as it's gonna get. And all said and done, that's what it looks like up front. I think that looks awesome. It's not 100% centered, but you can kind of work the edges a little bit and kind of pull and push and get it exactly where you want it. is vinyl and it is just a cover so with some effort like that it's pretty damn center now and voila you're done next step obviously you got to put the holes back in it so you can put the uh, mounting brackets and everything on so you got to go through and do that especially here on the sides yeah, that's about it. You just cut a couple little holes, put the little side releases on there, seat belt backs, and then it's good to go in. Um, got a text about the bottom seat still, so the next thing I'll do is probably get the driver's seat done while I wait on a response and while I wait on some information. I'll just let you guys hang out. You'll be back here in a couple seconds. It's probably going to be 20, 30 minutes or so until I'm back. All right, so picking you guys back up. I've been busy, as you can see with the driver's seat, it is together. Um, the passenger one, I have set out here in the sun. I spoke with Robert, he said that usually when you set them in the sun, the material will kind of shrink up a little bit. And as you can see, it has shrunk up nicely. The material doesn't have wrinkles in it. It looks really, really nice. I've got the driver's seat wrapped set this out in the sun the other thing is while you have these apart before you start reassembly take the brackets off the side and paint them by they look so much better i forgot to do that so i had to mask that one off and paint it i did this one here i got on there finally i'm letting it sit in the sun get some temperature help take out some of those wrinkles <clears throat> but it was the same thing on the driver's seat as it was with the passenger you had the ball string on the edges and then you just put the cover on fit it nicely pay attention to what you're doing and it comes out looking as you see here i'm going to let these sit in the sun for a little bit take a small break come out start poking holes in them and putting them back together as far as the back seat goes showed you guys how i went through and handled all that this is how it looks in the car it's a little hard to see but it looks really, really nice. Um, the bottom seats, I'm going to have to do another day because I do need to order a set of hog ring pliers and some hog rings or go buy some. Haven't decided yet, but I have to get those to do the bottoms. And once I get those, I will come back and show you how I did it. But as for right now, I think we're doing pretty good. I'll be back with you here shortly once I get them installed in the car. I'll probably put it out in the sun where you can see the interior better and get you guys a couple shots of it so you can see what it looks like. In the meantime, stay safe, show me your taillights.